We all know the Pixel phone, the Google Pixel phone is an absolute eater of stars. It does astrophotography incredibly well. When the iPhone 12 Pros came out with Pro Raw, it was a little bit of a game changer for the iPhone community. We all said, hey, this is pretty bloody good. We can now shoot astrophotography really well. But how does it really compare to the Google Pixel in RAW? We're going to do a couple of tests today. We're going to shoot RAW in both phones and we're going to shoot RAW with both phones in the same time frame. Let's get into it. G'day guys, Shane Mostyn here. I do two videos each and every week all about small sensor photography. So if you're into that sort of thing, mobile phones, action cameras, and we do these sorts of photos, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell so you see what I'm doing each and every week. And if you have subscribed, you're a bloody legend. Today what we are doing is comparing RAW from the Pixel to the RAW from the iPhone. And we're doing this in the most even playing field that I can think of uh, to test these things against each other. So what is RAW? So if you haven't seen the videos I've done before with the Pro RAW when it first came out, RAW is basically the information directly off the sensor. It's, a, it's the way that I shoot all my regular stuff, as in regular photography work with my proper camera, doing weddings and that sort of stuff. I shoot RAW and all of that, basically because it gives me more power when I want to edit that video later. When it comes to mobile photography and shooting RAW with mobile phones or cell phones, depending on where in the world you are, what you call them, there's some upsides and some downsides to this. Upsides are the camera computational photography that happens in the camera doesn't affect it as much as it would if you were shooting a JPEG. The downside of it is that it takes up a lot more room. So a regular JPEG file is roughly this, a regular sort of RAW file shooting the same sort of thing is roughly that. So you can see it takes up quite a bit of space on your phone. So that's a major downside. Another downside is that you have to edit the photo. You can't go and put a RAW file as is straight from the camera onto social media, for example. It just doesn't work. You need to convert that to a JPEG file and you do that when you edit. Now I've done lots of videos around editing and stuff and I'll link up the top here so you can see how to do some editing on the sort of photos that we're taking here tonight. So on the iPhone 12 Pro, they're the, they're the phones, the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max, they're the two phones from Apple that give you this Pro Raw functionality. With the Google Pixel, depending on the version that you have, one, you've got to do it through the menu, so you just swipe down from the top of the screen and go to the gear icon, go type in camera, and depending on the version of uh, firmware that you have on the phone, you'll need to enable it that way. So if you've got a later version, so Gcam 8.1, you enable RAW through the camera app itself. So you go into the camera app, uh, go, we'll go across to Night Sight, which is what we're going to use for the astrophotography anyway. We'll swipe down from the top and there's a new menu there. Up the top there, you've got JPEG only and RAW. When you shoot RAW, you shoot both JPEG and RAW. It's as simple as that. So that's how you turn them both on. That's what RAW is. Let's get out there and take some photos. So we've got the Pixel sitting here on a tripod. We've opened up the camera and with uh, Google Cam 8.1, the layout's changed a little bit. It's gonna open up the camera. It's gonna tell you straight away here, try night mode. So we're gonna swipe down to night mode. And because we're sitting on a tripod, it's going to tell us here, try astrophotography mode. So what I'm going to do is just touch out there on one of those stars, hit the start button and let that sucker shoot. And it's gonna shoot for four minutes and six seconds. We'll come back and we'll see what the photo looks like. So that actually looks pretty good. Four minutes and six seconds. I knew it was going to look good. Anybody who's watched any of my videos with the Google Pixel, you knew it was gonna look good too. If you own a Pixel, you knew that was gonna look really good. What we're gonna do now though, is we're going to get another photo and we're gonna let this shoot for only 30 seconds. So we're going to the same mode, going to camera. So to tell us here, try night mode, we'll go to night site, wait for astrophotography to pop up here because it's dark enough, there it is there. We'll touch on the stuff so that we get the focus and we'll hit the shutter button. Let's go on starting at four minutes and six seconds. So what we're going to do now is wait for four minutes and 36 seconds, three minutes and 36 seconds, and we're going to stop it. So at the moment, that little X is sitting here, we can't stop that at the moment. It's still capturing more light. So when this X 
turns into a stop button, we know that we can stop it. There it is there. It's only gone for three minutes and 43, so we need another 10 seconds. So it's equatable to what the iPhone can do. <clears throat> 37, 36, that'll do us. We'll stop it there and we've caught that photo. Let's have a look at that. All right, so that's interesting. I think that it's pretty obvious that the 30 second uh, exposure there was a lot less um, impressive than the four minute exposure. And I see there, even on the back of the phone, on the screen on the phone, I can see there's a lot of digital noise on the uh, Google Pixel's 30 second long RAW file. A lot of noise. Um, so let's have a look at the iPhone. I've got the iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max sitting here on the tripod, same tripod, same setup. Um, I'll go into, first of all, let's turn RAW on up the top there. Turn that on. We'll turn night mode on. We'll go down to 30 seconds. We'll touch on a star out there. Wait for 30 seconds, there it is, and hit the start button. And we wait for 30 seconds. This is what the iPhone does anyway. It should take a pretty bloody good photo. I was actually a little bit disappointed with how it looked on the back of the phone with that Google Pixel phone. But look, we're gonna throw these onto Lightroom in a minute. We'll go back into my office. We'll put them onto Lightroom in the on the computer and we'll see what sort of noise and comparisons we can make. I've got a feeling that uh, the four minute exposure will be the superior photo for, the, for tonight, um, but the, to two 30 second photos, I've got a feeling the Apple phone will be somewhat better. Um, but hey, it's, we're not really, we are comparing apples with apples there. If this thing, if the iPhone could shoot for four minutes and stack those images, that would be a, that would be huge. Once the Milky Way season comes back, I've got some pretty good ideas about doing that and uh, we'll see how good they are. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, you'll see that video. I've got uh, a vi an, an idea for a video that once the Milky Way season is back there, so it's a bit more impressive in the sky, we're gonna stack some images out of this iPhone 12 Pro. So uh, look, that's finished. Let's get these back into the office, back onto the computer, and we'll compare them. Let's go. So I've got four photos now, and I've brought them all four into Lightroom uh, on the computer here. First photo that I'm looking at here is uh, JPEG. So this is the iPhone just shooting a regular JPEG, and I did that just before I left. Um, I did that mainly to compare, I guess, between the, the JPEG, letting it do what it wants to do without any editing, uh, and then comparing that to a RAW. The second photo here, this one is the four minute and six second RAW photo from the Pixel. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here is the 30 second photo from the Pixel and the 30 second RAW photo from the iPhone. What we're going to do here is we'll go through and quickly edit all of the three RAW photos. Um, I'm going to use the same amount of noise reduction on all four and we'll see how it all works. So as you can see with this pixel, uh, with the iPhone photo first, it's pretty dark. In fact, most of them are quite dark. So we'll need to fix up that first. Um, we'll go and raise the exposure, the whites and the blacks, and we'll just try and push it away from the left-hand side on the histogram up the top there. I want to increase the contrast, increase that exposure a little bit and the shadows a little bit. Now, if we zoom into the to trees along the edge of the channel there, uh, this being the channel just here, if we zoom into the trees, you can see they're all just blurry. And you may have heard from the audio just before that was a bit of wind blowing up. So this is a 30 second photo and there's a fair bit of wind. So that's why the trees are blurry. The bits of grass in, in the front there in the foreground, they're blurry as well. Can't do much about that. We're really looking at the stars here and seeing what sort of noise in the shadows and up in the sky is present through these two devices. So we go up into the sky, you can see we have a little bit of star trail going on there because it's a 30 second photo. Um, I'll link up the top here to a video that I spoke about um, last week or the week before about reasons that your photos aren't working. And I talk about the rule of 500 in there and we can certainly play by that rule of 500, but um, it's a phone. I don't care. <laughs> I, think that, I think that for a phone, these do a pretty bloody good job. So there's a little bit of noise in there. So what I'm going to do, I'll just increase the clarity and that'll probably bring out a little bit of noise as well. Increase the dehazing. The dehazing on, on the iPhone photo actually does a fair bit. So we'll increase that to maybe 25 to 30 and the vibrance as well. Let's scoot down the bottom here to the noise reduction. 
Now I'm looking at this window here to see what it's going to do. I'm just going to give it to a figure of 40. Actually, that didn't do too bad. 40 was what we'll, we'll, we'll run. <laughs> 40 is what we'll run with. Um, and they actually got rid of a lot of the noise out of the sky. I think that's that's pretty good. Let's check out the white balance here. I think that looks uh, a little bit warm. Let's go with 5,000 Kelvin. That's a much better photo, I think, for astrophotography. Let's go across to the next one. This is the first of the pixel photos. It's the 30 second long photo. And we're going to do basically the same thing. That's already sitting at 5,000. Increase the exposure, contrast, Highlights, shadows, blacks and whites, and that just blew it all out. So we need to treat this differently to what we just did with the iPhone. Increase the blacks and the whites and the shadows. Might leave the highlights down. Yeah, that's better. Increase the dehazing. A little bit in the clarity. If I look up on here, honestly, this noise is just horrendous. We're going to duck down the bottom to the same noise reduction and we'll give it a figure of 40. And that's all I'm going to do to that photo just now. Let's go and have a look at the four minute photo um, from the pixel. Zoom in on the sky and there's virtually no noise. And the reason for that is that the pixel, when it does its four minute exposure, it's not actually a single exposure. It's 15 or 16 frames of 15 or 16 seconds each. And then it just stacks them all together and it does it mainly to get rid of noise. And it does a pretty bloody good job. But it is a raw file, so we'll, we'll quickly edit it as well. I'm gonna bring that up to 5,000, that temperature. Too many zeros, Shane. And we'll increase the exposure and the contrast. The shadows a little, and the whites and the blacks. It's starting to come away from the left-hand side of the histogram up here. So that's kind of all I really want. I'm going to increase the blacks a little. It just gave me a warning down there. This is down the side here is one of the warnings that um, I use when all highlighted blue, that it's not going to print anything. It's just going to print black. Um, we'll increase the clarity, increase the dehazing. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to do the same thing with the noise reduction. It doesn't need it though. For a, for a phone, no one can argue that's not good. That's really bloody good. So that's a four minute photo from the Pixel. Let's have a quick look at the JPEG from the iPhone. Might as well start down the bottom here. We'll go 40 for the noise reduction. We'll go at the top. This is not going to do, uh, it's not going to give us the same sort of white balance as what the raw file did. It's one of the things that you don't bring over. It just gives you a, a, a figure of plus or minus from zero. Whereas, um, a raw file will actually give you the, the Kelvin number that's applicable. Increase the contrast, increase the blacks on that, increase the whites a little bit. That's probably all I'm going to do to that. If you want to see these photos, I'm going to put them over on phonephotoschool.com.au on the review for the Pixel versus iPhone raw. And you can pull these images down yourself and have a look at them yourself. But uh, let's go back now and do what we've all been waiting for. And this is the 30 second raw file from the iPhone. Um, and the noise reduction in that has worked quite well. There's no little hot pixels and stuff that you see when there's a lot of grainy noise around. That's pretty good. For a 30 second photo from a phone, that's pretty good. This is the pixel at 30 seconds. And that's still absolutely chockers full of noise. Chockers uh, is a lot, it's really full. <laughs> I've just realized that you may not know what that means. And something else I noticed here, there's a lot of double stars. So I've got a feeling that the pixel might not stack them as it goes. I think it might do it in the processing later because these stars have clearly moved. If you think about it, I did a 30 second photo and they're 15 to 16 seconds each. So there's, there's two exposures in this, in this pixel photo of 30 seconds. And you can see it because so many uh, so many of these uh, stars uh, doubled up. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. They're all doubled up. So the computational photography hasn't kicked in there yet. So it's certainly something on a, on a uh, something worthwhile noting, I guess you could say. So the technology that's in these phones now is is 
well, it's quite impressive. Um, clearly with these photos here, what we've seen, at 30 seconds each, the Pixel doesn't hold its own against the iPhone. So that tells me that the hardware that's in these two phones is far superior in the iPhone than what it is in the Pixel. It's the only thing that's saving the Pixel at this point is the computational photography as far as I'm concerned. And the way it does it is bloody brilliant. So Apple, pay attention. Your hardware's on point besides that bloody lens flare issue that you got going on. But if you were able to stack these things in the phone, you'd be killing it with astrophotography. But I'll tell you what, I have found a way to do it. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because uh, in about two months, when the Milky Way season is back, I'll be showing you how to stack these images from the iPhone and we'll get some awesome photos. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys next week. See you later.